Hi, I'm Jennifer Allen reporting for RSNA News. I'm talking with Dr. Linda Moy, professor in the Department of Radiology at NYU Grossman School of Medicine. We're talking about the use of supplemental MRI for women with extremely dense breasts. Thank you, Dr. Moy, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. First question, why do women with dense breasts tend to have a higher risk of interval cancers? That is a great question. Let me go ahead first and define interval cancers. So interval cancers are cancers that develop between when a woman would have had her previous mammogram and her next mammogram. So usually these are where the, the previous mammogram was normal and a woman is now presenting with a lump and it turns out that that is a breast cancer. And these are cancers that tend to be more aggressive, you know, they're developing faster. So we really want to catch this. So why do women with dense breast tissue have this higher risk of interval cancers? It probably comes down to two issues. One is that the dense breast tissue makes it harder for doctors to see breast cancers on mammograms. So there is therefore a higher likelihood that the cancer may be, may be missed. The other issue is that women that have the dense breast tissue have a higher risk of developing breast cancer compared to women who don't have dense breast tissue. And this is really based upon large epidemiology studies, which just shows the great amount of this dense or normal fibroglandular breast tissue means that your risk is a little bit higher. So this breast density is a risk factor compared with many other risk factors, which all needs to be calculated, such as the patient's age, her family history, and whether she's had prior biopsy showing high risk lesions. So this dense breast tissue is just another factor. What did the radiology study on the Netherlands Dense Multicenter Trial find, and why are its findings clinically significant? So this DENCE trial was a large multi-center randomized clinical trial where women were randomized an arm where they would have a breast MRI in addition to a mammogram. And in that first round where women underwent one MRI, they actually found that the interval cancer rate was lower in the MRI group. It was about half the rate, 2.5 per thousand women versus five in those women that had the mammogram only. And also they showed that the MRI found more cancers, about 16.5 per thousand. And what we had published was then what we call the next round or the second round of screening which found that the cancer detection rate was still pretty high, about 5.8 per thousand. But more importantly, the number of false positive results had decreased sharply from the original round of 79.8 down to 26.3. So what this means is that once you have that first baseline mammogram, we can compare it. We know the woman's normal pattern. And for radiologists, this makes us more comfortable in dismissing something as part of that normal background of enhancing breast tissue. So I think this means that the MRI not only is a more sensitive test in finding cancers that we miss in mammogram, but that over time with consecutive MRIs, it's very good and leads to fewer false positives. And that is what that makes this dense trial clinically significant. Why is reducing false positives such a benefit for breast imagers? Sure. So false positive is a term that we use in radiology for everything from breast to let's say liver or brain imaging. And it means that we see something that stands as the finding and we're not sure. And usually, you know, although our, our hunch is that it's normal, we certainly don't want a patient's health to rest on our hunches. So therefore, we are recommending a follow-up a follow exam, let's say in six months, or sometimes even recommending a biopsy because we want to be extra careful. And if something's bad, we want to find it at the earliest stage possible. But however, when you tell this to a patient, and most women are undergoing a breast MRI because they are already at high risk, usually based upon genetic mutation or family history, you know, this creates a lot of anxiety. There's anxiety of waiting six months to come back in for follow-up exam to be told, you know what, that, uh, that spot's stable, probably part of your normal breast tissue, or to say, you know what, 
we see an area, we think it's paranormal, but I really want to do a biopsy to make sure. All of that does lead to a lot of anxiety in patients and a broader scheme, false positives, you know, do attribute to a lot of healthcare costs. You're coming back for additional exams and biopsies. So for all these factors, we would like to reduce the false positive rate without you know, like taking the sacrifice of missing cancer at the same time. Why are women still reluctant to participate in supplemental MRI, especially when they know they have dense breasts? So the reason why is probably because MRI is a difficult exam to undergo compared to other breast imaging exam. So it is much longer than the mammogram and a breast ultrasound exam. I understand that with a mammogram, it's an x-ray and we do have to compress a woman's breast, but that exam is usually, is usually done in about one to two minutes. Also with an MRI, patients may be claustrophobic and we do need to give them a contrast dye because that's how we find the cancer. So, you know, we are working very hard to try to make a MRI something that women are more likely to tolerate. So something that has been in the literature is an abbreviated MRI with a shorter sequence. This is something that's been developed not only in breast, but liver and many other parts of the body to sort of make this a, an exam that more patients can tolerate and really be able to get the benefits of this additional, more sensitive exam. Great, thank you, Dr. Moy, for your time today. Thank you so much. To read Dr. Moy's editorial and the radiology study mentioned, visit rsna.org slash radiology. And for more radiology news, visit rsna.org slash news.